Welcome to the second episode of A Second Look Goal Show. My name is Emmett McConnell. In this series, I look at the goals and big plays from the previous weekend and analyze them. Last week, the Union went to LA to take on the Galaxy. They lost 2-0 thanks to two goals from Zlatan Ibrahimovic. In this episode, I will analyze the first goal, as well as why the penalty was called for the second, and then look at the Union's two best chances of the night, and then finally we'll wrap it up by looking at Austin Trusty's red card. This goal begins because of a breakdown in the midfield. The defense, however, recovers well, and in the end the goal only really happens because Zlatan beats Trusty to the header. In this first frame, we see the four Union midfielders very spread out. Though the entire shape limits the center mid, Joe Corona's options. Corey Burke and Jamiro Montero are effectively blocking off Corona's options in the midfield. But Felcher pushed forward to occupy Wagner, forcing Harris Medunian in to slide out and help by covering Roman Alessandrini. It isn't an ideal ball to play into either of them under pressure, but it's Corona's only option. The pass comes to Felcher, and Wagner is right on his heels. While Medunian attempts to block off the pass to the middle instead of following Alessandrini's run down the wing. Montero's instinct, and what the system appears to be trying to do, is to drop and backpress Felcher and trap him. He loses the run of Corona. It's important to note here that the Union's only midfielder in the center of the park is Alejandro Bedoya, who also has to keep an eye on Sebastian Lejet here. Wagner blocks Felcher's attempted flick, but the spin takes Medunian out of the play as Montero tries to recover. The Union appear to be in a lot of trouble here. The press didn't stop Corona, and the trap didn't prevent the ball from coming in field. The Galaxy now have five men in good positions. Felcher is open on the wing, Uriel Antuna has drifted in, and Zlatan has dropped back to receive the ball. It's effectively a 3-on-3 for the remaining Union defenders. But remember how I said five men were in good positions? The ball is coming to Zlatan, he could easily play Felcher wide, flick it behind for Antuna's run off Elliott's back shoulder, or his two incoming options, a layoff for Lejet, who is in acres of space now, that Corona has played around the two Union midfielders and drawn in a third. The last is the off-screen run of Jorgen Skjelvik, who ends up getting the assist. There's just no Union defenders around to possibly mark him. The pass from Corona actually makes it difficult for Zlatan to play any of those five guys. He wants it to his left foot, which would open Zlatan's hips to his options, but instead it's slightly behind him, and forces him to play with his back to goal despite no initial pressure from a defender. Elliot is dropped off so the flick to Antuna is no longer an option. Bedoya is pressuring from the side, so the layoff for Leggett is off. Skelvik is just too far away and out of Zlatan's vision, so that pass is also off the table. He can only play it to Felcher, but by then, and that time he has readjusted and turned his hips for the pass, he is surrounded by four Union players. The only two are actually actively preventing him from making a play. Trusty blocks the pass to Felcher, and the initial momentum the Galaxy had is lost, but is gained back quickly enough. Bedoya perhaps tries to be too clever in attempting to tap the ball past Ibra, and should instead just whack it away. Zlatan blocks the touch, and it falls to Alessandrini, who has many options now. Medunian and Montero, the two players who weren't really pressuring Zlatan, has still yet to get back into position since that awkward deflection earlier, and Bedoya is still forced to do all of the dirty work. Wagner is reluctant to cover Trusty completely, and both Zlatan and Felcher here are goal side of their two defenders. Alessandrini opts against that difficult through ball, however, and instead takes another touch, sucking Ray Gaddis, the right back, into the play. He fakes a shot, and slots Skjelvik wide, who has been open this whole time. A perfect pass would have been put right here, but the pass is slightly too wide to allow Skjelvik to get closer into the box and to the end line. Bedoya is quick to continue his pressure into the wide area. Now the Union defense actually does a really good job of getting into defensive position here. Once the ball goes wide, Trusty and Wagner are turned on and get into position to defend quickly. Elliot is covering the near post, Gaddis is covering a cutback, while Trusty and Wagner have the far side covered. Just as the ball is coming in, you see Trusty turn around here to find Zlatan. 
He backs off towards him, but is still beat in the end. It appears that this might have been a case that Trusty turns around to pick up Zlatan, but when he turns back, he doesn't pick up the ball right away, because he is still moving backward as the ball is coming in, and he ends up not attacking the cross. This allows Zlatan to get up early and above Trusty. Initially, I thought Zlatan pushed off Trusty to get above the defender, but he just times it up better and is up in the air jumping before Austin Trusty. I think this play was actually good overall by Trusty. He makes the initial block, despite being split between covering Zlatan and Felcher, then he gets back quickly to pick up Zlatan for the cross. He is just slightly too slow to react, and the 6-5 Swede is just the guy to punish you. Now on to the penalty. At first I thought this was a bogus call, but having looked at it a few times, I'm now okay with the decision on the field. Let's take a look. This call was tough because I think Zlatan is jumping off Trusty a little bit, as well as jumping into Wagner. But here is why it's a penalty in the end and wasn't overturned. Zlatan once again gets up earlier than his man, and Wagner sticks out his left leg here undercutting Zlatan. It stands because it's a really unnatural movement from Wagner, and though I think it was more of a reflex to protect himself than intent, to foul, it's still a foul in the end, and VAR did not see a clear and obvious error enough to overturn it. Had the call not been a penalty on the field, I also don't think VAR would have overturned that and made it a penalty. It was just too close of a situation. Now we're going to look at the Union's two best chances of the night, which both fell to Alejandro Bedoya. Here is the first of the Union's chances. The ball is played wide to Wagner, who's trying to get upfield and chase the game. The Galaxy midfield is really slow to react and leaves their back line isolated this, almost this entire play. Aronson, who was well marked by Jonah DeSantos all game, gets into the triangle of space between Felcher, Steres, and Dos Santos. Felcher is now in a 2v1 scenario. He looks over his shoulder to pick up Aronson and try to block off that pass as well as guarding Wagner. The Union left back sees this and immediately pushes the ball past the swiveling defender. Aronson is still open in the box here, but Wagner takes his touch just a little too far and he doesn't get a chance to pick up his head for a pass and is forced instead to whip in a cross. Perhaps the transition was too fast for both teams, as Pico is the only Union man in the box, and the two Galaxy center backs are there to guard him fairly easily. Pico doesn't move, or make any runs, so Steres is comfortable at the near post, and Polenta easily steps to Pico, but by doing this allows space behind him. The cross does go behind him towards the back post, and the left back, Skjelvik, is in a really awkward position, with Bedoya charging in behind him. Skjelvik tries to flick it backwards, but Bedoya is there to win it over him. I think Skjelvik should have either put it out for a corner, or in this direction, if he felt enough, if he felt comfortable enough to clear the box. In the end, he does enough, and the header is not clean. Steres, who was initially at the near post, is in a position to head the ball away at his as it's just a little too far for Pico to get in front of the man. If Skelvik hadn't gotten anything on that header, Bedoya's ball likely would have either been goal-bound with pace, or in a position for Pico to tap it in. Steres decides anywhere will do with his header, but the ball falls nicely for Burke, who scuffs his shot. Bedoya is quick once again and turns to hit a shot. It's an awkward body shape for him, and he can't get all the power and accuracy he wants. He isn't able to get all the way around the ball and put it on target, and goes off the post and out. This next Bedoya chance is the tougher shot, but ends up being just about as close. The play starts with Montero winning the ball off the substitute Araujo with smothering pressure, and now it's a 4-on-4. Four four. The Union were just too slow to react overall here. I'll highlight Aronson because I think if he begins moving earlier, he would have ended up with a better chance to score than Bedoya had. The play starts with Araujo squaring up to Montero now, but Pico is making a run into the channel, a space Araujo apparently doesn't realize exists behind him. This forces Steres to come out of position slightly, and now only one Galaxy defender is in the box, marking Corey Burke. Both Montero and Pico slow the play up, and had just one push the ball with pace, Likely, there would be more space would have opened up 
on the inside as they pulled out the fenders. In the end, Araujo is able to mark both men once the play has slowed down. He isn't quick enough in the end to block the cross, but he does force it to come from an awkward position, more so than if Pico had gotten his touch towards the end line. Now back to Aronson. He doesn't make the darting run I mentioned earlier until the cross has already left Pico's foot, and it ends up being just too far for him to reach. Bedoya comes in from off screen once again with pace and smashes the ball from the top of the box. It's just a bit off, but then again, given the position the Union were at the beginning of this play, this was perhaps the best and most impressive part of the attack. Now on to the last part, Trusty's red card. It was really a second yellow, but I just want to quickly show where he made his mistake. Yes, I think the best thing for him to do was not commit at all, but he's late and he's tired, and he ends up making the tired choice of lunging across his body with his preferred left foot. Had he stepped in with his right, the correct way to tackle here, it might not have been such a late challenge. This is just a slower and clumsier way to make a tackle on an opponent to step across your body, and in the end is a deserved yellow card. Well, that's all we have this week on A Second Look. I uh, hope you liked it. If you have any ideas, please let me know. Until next time, have a great day.